then the question, you know, then the person might ask the question, well, can you ever grow grain, yeah. you know, sustainably? And so there are a couple things. One is, um, one of the problems with, you know, modern grain production is that we have reduced the size of the plant relative to the volume of the grain. Mm. So we've shortened the stem. In fact, a lot of people think that this is, um, this has something to do with our gluten problems. Mm -hmm. That as the, as the ratio mm -hmm. of, the, of the biomass to the seed changes, it, um, it has an effect in enzymes, mineral balances, you know, all sorts of things. And, uh, and so uh, if, if we grow longer stems, so that when we take the seed, we're not taking as much of the material and we're leaving right. the biomass on and we don't sell straw, uh, and we, you know, we, we get all of that back on the ground, and then, and then next, of course, uh, this can now be done with pasture cropping, where we don't even have to till, and don't have to use any herbicides. We simply use uh, herbivores to prepare, to yeah, to, to yeah. lower it and, and get an annual in, and and crop it. So you know, these are all uh, uh, mechanisms that can be done. Now, does everybody we buy grain from do all of these things? No, but but if if we, uh, you know, we haven't gotten where we are overnight and we won't get out of where we are overnight. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you could say, well, in the perfect world, you know, we would, we would, you know, grow the chickens on the same ground that grew the grain, you know, that, that, that they're on. Um, and in fact, we're in discussions with one of our very nearby neighbors right here who does a lot of grain farming. And, um, and we're beginning to discuss, could we run chickens on the ground where the grain comes from and completely close that that loop so that's a discussion that's ongoing but i don't believe that annual cropping inherently has to deplete the soil if it's done in a in a a, a rotation where there where it's broken up with with perennial pasture in between for three years or whatever and if there's an animal component in the system and you you know and you run it that way mm -hmm. And I've seen a video that must be a few years old already, but where um, you explained that um, somebody, I believe in Australia, had, who had sheep, really mowed it down right. low, tried to seed, and it yeah. mowed it down again after it germinated. And right. Then, that, that's Colin Sice. That's right. Colin Sice in Australia, and he developed the term uh, pasture cropping. Yeah. We've done it twice here, okay. and, um, and it's definitely beginning to be adapted here in the U.S., mm -hmm. where you use the animals to eat down a, pa a, a perennial sward, or a perennial pasture, you, you uh, sod plant into that, your annual corn, wheat, barley, whatever, plant into that, peas, whatever, and then right before it germinates, you graze it again, sooner than you would normally if you were just grazing, and of course the animals aren't happy for a day, you're pushing the animals but you're always also pushing the system and you're actually weakening the perennial enough that then the annual jumps up ahead of it and as it stays ahead of it, it begins to shade out the perennial so that you actually get a, a, a beautiful um, a canopy, a, a crop, uh, but you haven't killed the sod underneath. Mm -hmm. And then as the, as the, per, as the annual begins to desiccate, you know, as it gets mature, the leaves turn brown and it starts to fall down desiccate that lets some light into the understory the grass begins to grow so when you come in with the combine and take off the seed head you're already you know this tall with grass and you can then immediately get a grazing yet in the same year of the um, of, of the annual right. so there are there are some some incredibly um, uh, you know wonderful things I mean Gabe Brown in uh, North Dakota what he's doing with um, with, with uh, co cocktails mm -hmm. and where he's um, using the, the herbivores, uh, you know, it, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, in the big picture, in the big picture, I don't think we should raise the chickens that we're raising. Uh, chickens should be eating kitchen scraps and, yeah. and, and things like that in, 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 the, in the perfect world. Mm -hmm. But you know, we don't live in a perfect world. Yeah, we're not even allowed to feed any scraps with, with meat and to, to our chickens and your... Oh my goodness, yeah. Well, I mean, and, but they're omnivores. They, they love that. 
Yeah, the problem is that you know they are really afraid of, of uh, viruses in the industrial, mm. you know, plastic packaged sure. meats, and that will wipe out the pig and chicken populations. Which I understand, but that's caused by the industry. If you had these local circles right. of, of you know a school kitchen and, and back to the farm, you that's know, right. It, yeah, that's right, that's right. So I mean, there <clears throat> there are a lot of there are a lot of issues that have been created by uh, concentrated animal feeding operations factory farms, I and mean, there's a lot of names for them, but there are, there are numerous uh, issues that those have created. And, um, and so you know, we believe very strongly in a, in a biologically, uh, in, in a biological soup, if you will, as opposed to sterility. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, our microbiome is not sterile. It's a, uh, you know, in fact, our bodies, you know, we're, we're only 15% human. We're, we're 85% non-human. Mm. We've got, you know, we've got bacteria inside of our cells. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there, there's way more of us that's non-human mm -hmm. than human. Um, and the soil, same thing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the soil food web, the biome in the soil, you know, we, we've only named 10% yeah. of the bacteria and fungi in the soil. 90% are still unnamed. What we don't know about this is, is amazing. And uh, so anyway, uh, when, you, when you look at nature, yeah, birds eat meat, uh, they eat seeds, they eat grass, they eat worms. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we want is, is a template that, that, that fits that, that pattern uh, that we see. And the closer we can come to that template, the better off we'll be. Yeah.